Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David. I, I, I thought I heard something. Yeah, you were dreaming. Oh, I guess I was. You awake? Oh, sure. I'm up running around the block. Hmm. It's a funny thing. I was, I was dreaming about a fire, and then all of a sudden the engine sort of let out a big wail, like a baby crying. You were dreaming. Yeah, I guess I was. Well, he was quiet now. Not only quiet, it's the middle of the night. Hmm. For heaven's sakes, let me go back to sleep. I will. Excuse, please. Uh, certainly. You know, maybe it's something I ate. Dreams can be mm-hmm. something you eat, I guess, can't they? Mm-hmm. Well, I'll sleep on my left side. Mm-hmm. I think I dream when I sleep on my back. Mm-hmm. Whenever I sleep on my back, I wake up dreaming. In a moment, I'll wake up screaming. Say, so what time is it, darling? Mm-hmm. All right, don't bother. I'll look at the clock. Oh, my golly, quarter of two. Oh, no, I'm sleepy. Good night, darling. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a fire engine this time. It's the baby, and I better get up and see what's the matter with him. Darling, you can't run to him every time he cries. Who says I can? You know there's nothing the matter. He probably just woke up in a minute. He'll cry himself back to sleep again. I just want to make sure that that's all it is. You'll spoil him. He'll start crying every night in the middle of the night just to get you to pick him up. Bobby is not that kind of a baby. Hey, put on your bathrobe. Oh. You want to catch cold? Well, where is it? There. Find the... Oh. Say, David, do you mind if I put the light on? No, go ahead. I'm wide awake now, worse luck. I wake up right away. I stop sleeping the minute I wake up. Miraculous. How clever of you. Bathrobe. Slippers. Oh, it's a cold night. Say, maybe Bobby's wet. Maybe that's why he's crying. I don't see why he should cry about that, of all things, all of a sudden. He should be used to it by now. Oh, I think he'll be all right. I'm sure there's nothing the matter, but I just want to be sure why I'm sure. That makes great sense. I'm coming, Bobby. Oh, Having such a racket, you wake up the whole neighborhood. What's the matter with you, Goofums? Don't you know the middle of the night's no time for tantrums? Oh, I see. Oh, honey, I see. All you want is for me just to pick you up. Was that it? Well, now, that's real sweet of you, Bobby. Hey! I am insulted. My goodness, you're in a state. When are you going to grow up and be a man? All right, all right. Now, don't get excited. I'm going to change you just as fast as I can. You just lie down there and be still. I thought I heard the baby crying. Oh, you heard him crying all right. Anything the matter? I don't know. He stopped crying for a minute, and then when I came in, he started yelling all over again. I'm changing him. Mm, That's probably what it is. It's funny. He doesn't usually cry at night. And he's always wet, as David says. Let me look at him. Oh, he looks fine. Yeah. Nothing the matter with him is the big boy. He doesn't seem to agree with you. Come over here and let Grandma hold you. That's what you want, isn't it? He's awfully red in the face, isn't he, Mama? You would be, too, if you just screamed like that. Where does he get all that strength? I think everything he eats goes into his lungs. There, 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 there. Maybe he had a bad dream. I had a bad dream about a fire. Do babies dream, though? Of course they dream. Well, then that's probably it. Well, I'll I'll get him a fresh change, Mom. I might as well do him while we're here. Oh, you'll wake up your father, Bobby. Hush up, hush up, hush up. He's awake already and kicking plenty. What is it about the middle of the night and babies? I guess Bobby just hasn't learned how to tell time yet. Is that (laughs) it, Bobby? (laughs) Hey, Mommy, you better stop talking to him. Every time you open your mouth, he shrieks. It's 
just answering my questions. You know, being a grandmother certainly softened you. I think this one small baby could twist you around his finger. Mm, let him try. Put him down, Mom. I'll change him. Oh, I can't stand to hear him cry like that. Well, you better get used to it. He's just getting into his full stride. Well, I guess we really shouldn't complain. We haven't had much of this sort of thing, have we? Say, Mama, maybe he's teething. Open your mouth, Bobby. Let me see. Now, c- 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 catch him on the next yell, Mama. He could be teething. Do you realize he's almost... Let me see. July 5th, August 5th, September 5th, October 5th, November 5th. He's almost five months old. You cut your first tooth at five months. Well, maybe it runs in the family. Yes, he's definitely teething, yes. Four and a half months. I doubt it. Why not? They say the younger generation's always a step ahead of the older generation. Mama! What now? Do you know I just call myself the older generation? Golly, how time flies. Quick, look in his mouth while he's crying. Can't see anything. Hey, hey, why are you two women smothering that helpless little child? A tooth. A tooth? We're yeah. looking for a tooth. A tooth for a tooth. I think you've both gone mad. You, you won't find a tooth down Bobby's throat, will you? No, but we might find one under one of those gums, peeping through like a flower in the spring. <laughs> What's so funny about a flower peeping through in the middle of the night? David, come over here. Have a look. Yeah. Maybe you can find it. You're his father. Yes, David. They say that fathers can see many things in their sons that no one else can see. Not my kind of father. I'm so sleepy I can't even see the baby. Oh, you tiresome man. Yeah. Well, let's see. Where's this tooth supposed to be? In his mouth, Papa. Yes, that does sound like a tooth kind of a cry. Oh, baby, does it hurt you very bad? Oh, now, sweet if you start us. talking baby talk to that son of mine, out of my house. Well, then you ask and see if he answers you. All right. Now, boy, what's bothering you? Ah, that's a language he'll understand. Mm-hmm. Is the tooth? Come on, come on. Tell your father. I don't intend to stand around here all night walking up and down with you in my arms. Come on. The baby in his arms is very becoming to David, isn't it, Mama? He wears fatherhood well. Mm. <laughs> you see? Not a peep out of him. Yeah, yeah. He knows who his friend is. Oh, David, you disturbed him talking. Really sounds like a teething cry to me now. <laughs> Mama, yesterday when I suggested the baby's getting a tooth, you laughed in my face. Well, I'm still not certain, but... Well, if he's getting a tooth, he should cry. It's normal. So we can all go back to sleep and let him cry. What a happy solution. Do you heartless females think that I'm going back to bed and leave my son here crying his head off? When he's tired of crying, he'll stop. I'll be tired of his crying long before he is. Now, Mrs. Brown, dig deep into the depth of your memory and tell us what does one do for a teething child? Not very much. Well, what did you do for me? You didn't cry very much. Oh, I must have been a beautiful baby. You weren't bad, so I never thought you'd grow up to be what you are. Proves one just can't tell. Yeah, it's the old story of the oak and the acorn. Uh, enough palaver. Now, what, a, what about the not and offspring here? Well, some babies react well to a little hot water. Hot water? Don't look so horrified, David. I don't intend for you to drop him into it. Mama means a drink. I know what Mama means. I'm not a moron. All first fathers are morons. While you two argue, I'll go down and set the kettle on. No, 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 Mama. Both of you get out of my way because I'm going to... Oh, darling. After all, I'm his mother. Well, I'm his father. Well, it doesn't mean you have to kill yourself. I'm not killing myself. Now, get back to bed. Go on back to bed, you two. I'll, I'll attend to this. I'll time. do it, David. I don't have to go to work in the morning. And you'll probably have the crying baby on your hands all day tomorrow, Mrs. Brown, so I think you'd better go and sleep while you can. David, now, really, it is. Now, stop acting as if you think I don't know how to boil water. Now, go on, get to bed. Well, are you sure you don't mind, Doc? It only takes a second for a kettle to boil. I'm, I'm an expert. Say, David, mm-hmm. don't watch it while it's boiling. It takes twice as long that way. I'll be up. There, 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 there. Papa's boiling the water. Oh, look, Mama. His eyes are closing. I think he's tired. Put him down in his crib, Mama. 
There we are. Let me uh, just stay here until David comes back. Isn't he sweet how he hates to admit he loves being a father? Just give him half a chance to do something, and he's all over smiling. <laughs> well, Bobby's not a difficult baby to be proud of. I wonder what the others will be like. The other what? The other babies we're going to have. Well, you certainly don't think I'm going to let David waste his fatherhood on one small son. He's worth at least four. Don't forget, if David's going to be their father, you're going to be their mother. Mm, that's almost the nicest part of it. Mama, let's go down. Where? The kitchen. What for? David's boiling the water. Oh, well, I think it's a shame to let him boil it all by himself. Come on, let's creep out of here. The baby seems to be going to sleep. Come on, all right. Water should be boiled by this time. I don't know what's taking so long. It's funny. I, I don't I don't hear anything in the kitchen, do you? What do you expect to hear? Tea kettle whistling, of course. Maybe David used a pan. Oh, yeah, probably. It's just a little bit of water we needed. You know, I just can't believe it's the middle of the night. Why not? We're all awake. You know, I don't see why people are so prejudiced against the middle of the night. I think it's a pretty nice hour for families to get together. Claudia... Look. Oh, look at David, dozing in his chair. He looks just like Bobby. I don't mean that. Look at the kettle. Mama, it's not boiling. Of course it's not boiling. It's not even sitting on the gas. Oh, Mama, David put it down on one burner and then he lit the other. <laughs> it's a sure thing. It'll never boil that way. <laughs> He's sitting there waiting for it to whistle. He'll have to wait all <laughs> night. He was so sure he knew how to boil water. <laughs> when it's your night out and the neighborhood babysitter comes in to keep an eye on Junior, she'll beam if you tell her there's Coke in the icebox. She'll appreciate the pause that refreshes just as you do while she reads or listens to the radio. And you'll have won a great big H for hospitality. Better get Coca-Cola tomorrow so there's plenty on hand. Say, Joe, Joe, what on earth happened to me? Nothing, except that you fell asleep. Yeah, I guess that's what did happen. But why didn't the water boiling in the kettle wake me up? Because the water didn't boil in the kettle. Oh. You were very carefully placed the kettle on the wrong burner. I did. Say, listen, do me a favor and don't tell Claudia I'll never hear the end. I don't have to tell Claudia. She and Mama are giggling upstairs waiting for you to wake up. And I think I'll just let them wait. We'll see who laughs last, huh? Um, I have a feeling that the Norton household is going to be waiting for each other to laugh last until the wee hours of the dawn. You have nothing important scheduled for tomorrow, I hope. Well, Roger's coming out, and I dare say Jared Tucker will be around to make him feel old and decrepit. And Jared's the old man who can do that. Even to us young'uns. Well, back to my kettle, Joe, while you say... Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.